Okay. Um, hi. Um, I'm just waiting here to see if we had anybody show up asking to ask for some questions or anything about the um, assignment. Nobody showing up yet. Um, so hopefully it would be probably be a little bit late for people to be asking questions about the the uh, second problem set here. So that's due in like another hour or well two hours from now. Um, so hopefully everybody is working on that and, and is ready to turn that in or has already turned it in. So I see, um, I see quite a few people probably already turned it in. So um, I was going to talk some more about the assignment five and maybe talk about um, using the standard template library for your your cues and your lists and things maybe a little bit more. So kind of as I mentioned here in the last announcement, um, I did add this example to your repository. Um, if you want to pull that down, you need you do need to do a git pull. So if you open up your dev box, Um, you have to change into your repos uh, directory and then do a git poll. So for me, everything will probably be up to date, but um, um, if you don't have that, it'll say something that's um, downloading a few things. So in particular, what you'll find is that um, um, I, I showed this in the previous video. So I added um, um, the work that I did in the previous video. So there's now an example subdirectory um, called uh, STL for the standard template library, and that has the two code examples, but plus I added in a make file so that um, to make it easier for you to build this. So um, so if you want to, you can do make clean and make should build both of those. So. Um, and I even added some examples at the end of the uh, vector example of, of using it on proxy, but I thought I might um, talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, so, um, so you can run it here, okay? But I thought maybe um, I might show an alternative way of doing that. Um, and um, and yeah, that's probably all I'm gonna go over here today. So this this session might be shorter than usual. So um, I did get everybody started on the second assignment uh, in the last video. Actually, in the previous two videos, I, I showed kind of getting started on it. So um, if you want some more walking you through all the way through the the first task on the assignment two, uh, you might want to go back and refer to those videos. Um, so yeah, I, I had, uh, if you do that git poll though, you should have the examples now in STL, um, subdirectory, uh, the, the two that I had videos for. So the, the Q and stack examples and the vector examples. So uh, I go pull both of these up here. So I have them, so uh, I actually added a little example down at the bottom um, on the vector example of using a um, defining a, a vector of process objects um, for a process control block. Okay, uh, but uh, I'm going to kind of start from that point here. Although I would recommend if you want to try these things out, um, you could use this um, example that I set up here and, and try and create your own objects. Um, but it might be actually more useful now when I got to thinking about it. Um, this is probably what I would do if I, if I wanted to try and prototype, right? So it's not, it's, it's not easy to use the um, assignment two tests to add in code to try out different um, uh, containers to use for, for things that you might want to code. So you might want to instead um, try using the other file, the assignment two sim.cpp. Bring it. I'm going to put all put both of these over here in case I want to look at these examples again. So. All right. Um, I would recommend so. So I mean, the 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 main function that we have in there will actually run the simulation. So you'll need this um, in order to. Um, um, 
in order to run the system test. So I can see that um, probably from a previous help session, I commented some things out here so that you could actually, uh, to, as an example of how you could use this with the debugger to try out some things. So, so your normal, um, your normal, um, version of this is going to go through here and parse the command line arguments, which I talked about in a previous uh, video. So from from the command line, it'll pull off the time slice quantum and the sim file name. Um, and then you normally won't have this. So it'll, it'll just normally create the, um, the, the, the simulator object and then do a run simulation for you. So. So this is probably what your um, what your assignment to sim should look like is, is basically this, I believe, if I corrected it back to the way it was. So, uh, but yeah, like I showed in that previous video, it, you know, it, it might be, um, uh, this is probably the most useful if, if you want to um, try out some different things, you know, so, so try out some code, for example, playing around with the standard template libraries with the processes and the process simulator, because it, it, it when it builds the, uh, the sim executable, it links in everything you would need. Okay, So I would probably suggest um, maybe making a copy of main like I just did. Um, I'm going to rename this as the original main. Um, and I mean, you know, you could leave in this command line argument parsing because that might be useful in particular, maybe the time slice quantum. I'll leave that in, um, although I'm not going to use it here initially. Okay. So if you have that, um, and let's test that it still compiles and runs. So, so now, since I renamed the other main function, um, and I've, I've got this main function. Uh, called main though it should only run this main function um, with the code that I have or should start from running that. So um, so yeah if, if we leave it like this it will force us to pass in you know the the two command line arguments. Um, so we might also want to, um, comment that out. So that way, I mean, we can run stuff, even if we don't pass any command line arguments. So, um, so if I save that, it should, if I rebuild here, um, I should only have to rebuild the assignment to sim and then link it now. Yeah. Then I'm going to bring up a separate terminal or go back to my terminal to actually try running things out there. So the way I, again, the way I have it set up with that main, um, it'll just run. I'm going to try and parse some command line arguments, but um, um, if those aren't there, it'll just kind of ignore them. So although it will right now, I am having an output something there. So, so if we change back to our assignments. Should be able to run the sim. Um, so, oh yeah, so it's gonna, I guess it is gonna core dump if I don't provide two command line arguments. So um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of these. All right, so let's make it easier. So we'll just output something just to ensure that we're compiling running this new version, uh, this new main function here. So let's try it again. There we go. So we entered this in. Okay. So from, from here, um, let me go back to, um, so uh, in the previous video or two, I showed getting started with task one on the assignment. So after you're done with task one or, or um, uh, you need to make a decision then about you need to start implementing your actual data structures to hold the processes that you're going to manage for this um, simulation for assignment two. So in particular, you know, you need like a, a queue for your ready queue, uh, maybe some other structure, maybe, maybe not some other structure to hold the processes that are currently blocked. 
Um, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about those. Uh, but you might want to start thinking about it. So it's, you, you probably need, need one central structure to hold the list of processes that are currently in the system, no matter what state they're in. Okay. So um, our textbook refers to that as kind of the process control block. Okay. So that's the main structure that holds all the processes. Okay. Um, and um, you could use like a list. Um, uh, I, 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 I suggest uh, maybe a vector just as a, as a quick example. I'm going to redo this example that I had here. So um, if, if you want to use any of the standard template library um, containers, you do have to include it. So if I want to use like a vector, probably have to include the vector class, uh, the vector header actually, so I can use the vector class. Um, and then, you know, so if we wanted to use this to hold the processes as we create them, uh, we could do that easily enough. So, so this is called the standard template library because it uses what are known as templates in C++. Um, although, you know, if you're familiar with Java, um, uh, Java is kind of containerized in the same kind of way um, using um, templates like this. So you can create containers like this vector container. And you can tell it the type to hold. And, and in this case, I mean, you know, you can hold simple types like integers or floats, but you can hold more complex types. So if we say we, we're going to be having a vector process, we're going to have one of these vector objects, uh, one of these vector containers. And I'll call it process control block. Okay. So, what this allows you to do, I should, I should probably show you the documentation. So, I usually just um, use um, uh, the, the, the documentation from the, um, what's it called, the um, C site. So, if, if you do a Google search for, say, uh, C vector container, it'll, it'll usually be the first one that pops up for you. Be a little bit slower here for this to come up for me. Um, so, like, if we search for um, C++ vector container as an example, so uh, so yeah, the C++.com um, or the C++ reference, both of those can maybe be useful. Um, I think I usually just get, go to the C++.com. So anyway, this will give you kind of the basic, you know, again, this, this is this is an example, again, of, of some generated documentation. I mean, it might even be from like Doc Oxygen or something, um, which um, I don't remember if I've talked about that on this class or not, but, um, but here's our vector container, um, you know, and, and um, um, these are all kind of the member functions you can call a vector and, and they'll have some examples, like for example, how you can uh, use the, constructors, um, there'll be some code examples like to create a vector event, and a, a vector events in this case, right? Um, so the main thing about the, the vector here, and, and you can iterate over it uh, either as uh, an array, or you could iterate over it using um, this kind of newer for loop uh, notation. Um, let me show what I mean by that here. So, um, oh, I mean, okay, so first of all, I should probably add some things in there. So the, the very first thing, um, I mean, if, if we are going to access this as, this as an array, you might want to use the process identifier, the PID, as an index into your main process control block, right? And that's kind of uh, one of the things that we set up by by definition. So we use process ID one um, as the first valid process that's created in the system. Uh, and we kind of reserve process ID zero as a dummy or uh, to indicate like maybe an idle, like, like CPU being idle, we might assign it to be to PID of zero because um, PID of zero isn't considered a valid process, right? So again, if you look into our process, say header, dot uh, HPP, that over here. Um, some of these things are defined in there, including um, that the, 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 the PID for zero is kind of a special flag. So um, 
that we can use for representing an idle CPU. So, so what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, um, you know, you might want to, you could just always, if you're using a PID to index into this, you could always just subtract one. So process ID uh, one would be at index zero. So that, that would work fine. Um, like if we create our first process, so, so let me just go ahead and do that. So, so say my, my process identifier is one, um, and then uh, we create a new process. So here, if you look at um, the parameters for when you create a process, you have to pass in the, um, um, the process identifiers, we're gonna pass in one, you have to pass in the, the time when the process was created. So we're saying that at time step five in the system simulation, we create the process here. So if we create that process, uh, we can add to our process control block. So we could say process controls dot push back. Like that, right? So all this does is, is this so a vector is a container that you can kind of treat like an array. You can treat it like an array like you're probably used to, but um, it, it, it can draw it dynamically and it's relatively efficient to, to push things onto the end um, and let it grow. So here it, it, the, the vector will start off initially empty and if we push an item onto it, now it'll have one item on it, it'll be of size one. So you, know, you can do things like, again, you can look at the, um, um, the documentation for kind of all the things you can do. So you got ways to iterate over the container, construct it, iterate over it, um, to, to um, query it like about its size and things. And then other ways like, you know, for example, I'll show using um, the overloaded um, indexing operator to access elements, right? And you can push back and so you can put, you can relatively, um, um, you know, performance is relatively good to, to add or remove things onto the end. You can't really put things into the middle or the front of it, um, although you actually you can, you can insert it, but um, uh, like into the middle or, or at the front, uh, but this will be um, kind of an expensive operation compared to just adding things to the end and removing things from the end, right? But since for our simulation, you're creating new processes. Um, you know, the first one will be process one, second one, two. So you're only going to always be just creating new processes and wanting to add them to the end of the process control block. So, so a vector works fine um, as a container for this here. So, you know, we could do things like say, um, I'm going to abbreviate this to PCB for process control block. So if you ask for the size, let's go ahead and compile that and, and run that then. So, you know, we, we, we put one item on there, so we should have a size of one, right? So that's kind of how this container works, right? Build it. So it's a size of one, right? Uh, but, um, And, and like I said, you could iterate over this um, using kind of regular uh, index controlled loop that you might be used to. So I could do something like say for uh, PID, uh, although in this case, you might want to not think of it as a process identifier because it's really the index for um, I equals zero, I is less than um, the, the process control block dot size. So uh, just to, to emphasize this, so the index, I'll print out the index, and then we'll print out the process control block here, okay? So um, the reason why we can do this, uh, we're, we're sending a process, an actual process object. So, uh, so when you access um, a vector by an index, um, it'll pull out the item that's at the particular index, like index zero. 
um, in this case, right? And since this is a container of processes, it's going to pull out a process. So, so this thing we're pulling out of the process control block and index is a process. Um, and we've overloaded uh, in the code that I gave you, we overloaded the operator stream, the output stream to display a representation of the process. Okay, so, so this code should work to display. And, and we did that on purpose because um, you want to use that. You want to use this overloaded um, output streaming operator because you have to display your queue um, and the, the current process that's on the CPU and, and the block processes uh, as part of the assignment thing you have to do for the assignment. So. Um, so anyway, um, if you do that, so that, that will um, do a little loop, that'll show us all the processes, but um, here, um, so oh yeah, we're having that problem again, so um, the actual type from the size um, is not an integer, but uh, it's one of this defined as a size type. So you can see it returns a size type. Um, so, uh, which is really kind of an unsigned integer. So um, a little bit annoying, I think, but um, the quickest way is we could just always just cast that to an int to make the compiler happy. So, you know, say just treat it as an int since we're using an int. So I think we could also just make our i like the size type instead of an int if we wanted to. So. So, um, so if you do that and run, so notice, um, so after we push that process on there, the size of the process control, control block was one, but in the item at index zero was this process one here, right? Um, you know, and you can add multiple objects on here. So, so if we had a, a second process, um, Call it P2. Um, in this case, though, um, so I should don't want to give it the same process identifier, so I'll increment the PID so we get a PID of two um, and um, say it was created time eight, right? So, so now we should find that um, our process control block is uh, of size two and that there's two processes, right? But that um, so didn't quite work there. So I didn't that work. So um, oh, um, so I, I created the process, but I didn't actually add it on there. Okay? So um, I should have um, pushed that on the back as well, right? Um, there we go. So now we should have end up with two processes on our process control block vector. Uh, um, so yeah, there are actually, actually two there. I need to, I should put a new line in here because it all ended up on the same line. So let's um, Let's try it again, make this a little bit wider so we can see it better too. There we go. So, so now we're getting our two processes, uh, but yeah, like I said, it might be uh, inconvenient. You know, so, so if I wanted to access um, process zero, let's say, uh, or sorry, process one, Right, so you know, again, this is just illustrating the the index doesn't match the the PID um, um, since we start off with a, a process identifier of one, but it ends up being put into index zero. Right, so um, um, if we actually try an index just by the, the process identifier. Um, 
that So uh, trying to get process ID identifier one, we were actually getting the one at index one, which was PID of two, right? So, you know, um, for various reasons, um, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and um, uh, first put in like a process with a PID of zero. And, and by default, if you create a process, um, and you don't specify the process ID, it creates an empty one for you. So that's what the default constructor does with, with a PID of zero. So So now I'm actually going to have three in here, but um, um, I've kind of get, got this dummy process for the first one. Um, let's see here. So uh, um, I think that, uh, yeah, if you want to use the default empty constructor, you shouldn't. Uh, oops, right. To process the, the name is idle. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, now if we run that, we should find that um, uh, we think of the process control block as a size three, but uh, the, the, the one at index zero is idle, the one, and then now each one at the index is gonna be matching the process identifier. So process identifier for one will be at index one, you know, and, and if you do it like that, then I mean, this should always work fine because every time you add a new process, you're just gonna push it onto the end of your process control block, your, your vector here, right? Um, so your PID will always match the index in that case, right? Which will make it simpler. So instead of having to, you know, subtract one or make certain you're using the right PID, um, you can always know that PID one should be at index one in the array here. Okay. Um, by the way, there's another nicer way to write this loop, uh, a more um, higher level way. So you can use what's known as a um, um, what's it called. Um, So I talked about it in the video, um, the, the, this type of syntax um, is, um, So anyway, I'm, I'm kind of dropping a blank on that, but, but um, this basically means um, iterate over the, all the items in the container, uh, and each time the, the, the item um, that you're you know, looping through uh, will be assigned to this, into this variable, which is you know, uh, temporary or, or local to the loop here. So iterate over each item in the B strings, um, or here we can iterate over each process um, in um, our process control block. Well, you have to be careful about this. So I'm going to um, uh, say why here. Um, so, and in fact, um, this might not work here. Um, now that I think about this, um, because of the, 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 the thing you have to be careful about that I'm going to talk about next year, but um, this will work to uh, probably display these. So, um, so yeah, we don't have my I index anymore, so I'm just going to output. It. So, and um, just so that we don't uh, get confused by which is which, I'm just going to not use the index base one. So we'll just use this here, right? So then each time through the loop, it should um, assign the process into this variable P and, and we can output it again like we were doing, right? So when it compiles, 
we can run around. So, so again, this this loop like, it looks the same as before, except we don't have the index number on there, but, but we're just outputting all the processes, okay? But um, the thing you have to be careful about is that when you push like this process into here, or when you get the process out into another variable like this, it's, it's probably making a copy. So, so really after I pushed process one and process two under my process control block, I had process one and process two, but those were different from the processes now that are in the process control block because it's, it's doing an assignment. So it's actually making a copy of all the values of process one to put into the process control block. And so what that means is um, if you do something like say, uh, P1. So here's the kinds of things that you can do for a for a process. Uh, again, if you look at the header, so we could um, um, we could go ahead and make the process um, ready. So initially, when you run the process, it's in a new state, or when you create the process, it's in a new state. Um, so we could make process one. Um, ready, for example, by calling the ready function. Um, and now once it's ready, uh, we can even maybe dispatch it. So make it the running process. And then maybe run it for a couple of cycles. So that, okay. So um, the point being that you would expect um, if you were changing this, that you should see that process one is actually the running process um, and that um, uh, after we ran two CPU cycles, um, so in our output here, the number of views and the quantums, keeping track of the number of total number of system cycles and the, the time slice quantums in the current um, dispatch that have been used so far. So you, so you expect both those to be two and it's into the running state right now, right? Uh, but, um, um, and we can kind of confirm that. So even after we display that, um, yeah, after we, if I display the P1 that we actually did those two, um, we should notice that, that there, that there's a difference here. So, um, so notice, you know, again, my process one inside of the loop where we're getting out of the process control block is in the new state, right? Nothing used. But the P1, uh, when we actually output it directly, um, is showing that it's in the running state, as, as I was saying, we should kind of suspect, expect, right? Um, and, and again, this is all because, um, copies are being made. So when we push these on here, it actually makes a copy of these. So after we've done the push, the object on the process control block is different from the P1 that we have here. There's copies of, of, of each of them, okay? So, um, and in this case, it, if, um, so, you know, you should be careful. We, should, we really need to be doing it always with the actual object that we're managing our system with, right? all these to just use so here you know the difference is we're not doing this stuff in p1 we're doing this on the actual entity that's in the process control block at index one right so blah 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 right? and i call it um but again this probably isn't going to fix this because in this loop i suspect it also when, when it assigns the the actual object uh to the variable p uh, again it makes a copy uh, back out of it right so if i change these in here uh well it, so it'll look like it works here so and, and it should work fine here because um we're doing this after so we're displaying this 
after we've made the changes, right? So this will be whatever the, the, this copy that we have inside of the loop will be whatever the state was of the processes uh, when we entered the loop here. So, so yeah, I take that back. So um, it will actually probably display correctly now, right? So we'll see if that's true or not. So yeah, and, and, and this is what we're expecting. So inside of the loop, when we run it, the process one is now in the running state. Um, when we, when we display it um, after we dispatched it um, and ran it for two clock cycles here, right? All right, and these both match. Um, 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 actually, these don't match anymore because now if I do P1, again, we, we did this on the copy. Um, so yeah, P1 is still in the new state since we since we were doing it on the process control block and not the P1. So P1 and, and the, the object in the process control block are actually copies. So, so um, you see that difference again there. So, so again, if I want to actually get my object, I should access the particular one. Right. And for that reason, since a copy is being made here, I mean, it, it, since you're really kind of treating this vector as an array, as, as kind of a, um, a global array, you know, that that's, um, um, has good performance as you want to keep drawing it. But um, since you're mostly thinking of it as an array, it might might be make sense to go back and just use, you know, an index controlled loop, right? So think of this as your process identifier to iterate over the items, so. So yeah, after, after I made that change, now we should see both inside the loop and after that we we're getting the same object again, so, or the same information anyway, so. Um, okay, you can't use a vector. Um, I mean, a, a list container would also work fine um, for, um, for your process control block. So again, everything I show, uh, um, actually, except for the list though, um, yeah, the, the list, you can't really treat it. Uh, it doesn't have the um, indexing operator, right? So yeah, if you wanna get items out of your list, um, um, you can't do it quite so easily by by the process identifier, right? So then, so yeah, maybe a, a list actually isn't a good idea if you mainly want to work with it as a um, uh, you know accessing it by the process identifier, right? So in that case, you really want to use a vector. Um, the array container um, really just works exactly like a, a C array. So there's no advantage of using the array because once you create it, uh, you can't really grow. I mean, it does have the um, the indexing operator, but uh, you can't like add things onto it uh, for after initial creation. So there's no real advantage of using this um, over an array, right? Um, over, over just a regular array in C. So um, another possibility, you could use a map um, um, because maps allow you to um, index and access things uh, using the, um, Indexing operator. Uh, in this case, you just you just use the process identifier, which is an unsigned integer, um, as your key from the map. So, um, so anyway, back to this. Um, so so you know, do be careful about copying that. So if you're um, If you're comfortable with using um, memory management and pointers, then another kind of elegant way of doing this is to dynamically allocate your objects and just have vectors of pointers instead, right? So you could say that I have a vector of process pointers um, and then create uh, these processes um, uh, dynamically, right? So when you do that, uh, use a new, it, it, it allocates the memory dynamically, 
and it returns a pointer for you. And then you could push, you know, the, the process pointer on there. So, and then the only difference would be though that, um, um, you know, uh, since these are pointers, you'd have to dereference them by using kind of pointer arithmetic to get the thing out, right? But this would help because, so another thing, I'm gonna kind of go back to that and, and just kind of tell you. So if you're using actual instances of objects, um, like I had here, you have a bit of a problem. So um, uh, uh, you have to keep track of what is the process that's currently running on the CPU, right? So you can think of the process, the CPU is, is initially as kind of idle, but if, if you wanna implement it as a process, you have to be careful because if you take it off of your queue, uh, again, you, you might be making a copy. So if, if you put a copy here, um, when you um, um, when you dispatch your process to be the run running on the CPU, you'd have to be careful to, um, when it's done running, to, to make certain that any updated information that you did on the CPU, uh, you put back into um, you know, your process control block. Okay? So again, be, be aware of the copying um, that can be happening there. So um, uh, maybe a better, and this was kind of what I had in mind when I gave you the framework for this. So maybe instead of using uh, actual processes um, or you could use process pointers, I would actually fix all the issues I'm talking about if you're comfortable with dynamic memory management. But the other thing is you could just use you know, vectors of processes and uh, lists of processes for your queue. Um, and then, and then just keep, um, instead of like a copy of the object or a pointer of the object, just keep the process identifier. So if, if the CPU is currently running process one, you would set it to, to have process, um, you would just use the, the process identifier uh, to keep track of which process is running on your CPU. And when the, pro when the CPU becomes idle, you would um, allocate, you, you would set it back to idle, which is uh, the special zero process identifier. Right. And that would allow you, uh, so here, let's say, for example, let's say process two is the one that's running. So then at, at some point you have to simulate um, a CPU cycle happening in your simulator. So you'd want to do something like um, um, uh, in, in, in that member function, you'd want to use the, the member variable just keep track of the process identifier of the process that's currently running. So uh, maybe a good name for this might be, um, you know, if that makes more sense to you. So, so whatever are currently running PID is um, on, on the CPU, you know, you, you have to keep this as like a member variable um, and then you could, um, Um, so in this case, um, I haven't actually dispatched um, this process yet. So P2 is in like a, in the new state. Um, so I should so probably will get an error if we do this. So I'll show you that. So um, if we try and run a CPU cycle, um, Again, pulling it out of my process control block to display it after we try and run a uh, CPU cycle here. Right? Um, so, if, yeah, if you do that, probably it'll complain because you can't call CPU cycle on something that's not currently in the running state. So, you have to have gotten it ready and called dispatch on it before it does that. Right, um, or else um, we should get some kind of error message here when we run it. So, um, yeah, so it throws a simulator exception um, that has to be in the running state. So. Um, 
All right, and I'm kind of running out of time. So one last thing on that. So, so talking about the, the, the using, you know, just a, the unsigned integer, the, the process identifier, that's also another good way of, if you're just using, you know, vectors of actual processes, um, you might want to use uh, just uh, like a queue of, of the PIDs uh, for like your ready queue, okay? Oh, and another thing, like I said in my video, you. Um, uh, this week, lecture videos this week, you probably don't actually want to use the Q um, uh, standard template library class. So, so it, it would work. Let, so let's say, um, so we could create like a Q um, and uh, I'll call this, so what I was suggesting was maybe you could do like a Q Spell right. You do a queue of the um, process identifiers. Um, so these are just the regular integers, right? Uh, for for your ready queue, All right? Um, and then you know you can look up the queue. So um, for a queue, you can do the normal QE kind of thing. So you can push things. Um, it's a regular first in, first out data structure. So you could, if you push things onto it, uh, it'll push them onto the back by default. Um, and um, then you can access, yeah, this queue, you can actually access things from the front or the back, right? So by default, pushing will be pushing to the back um, and you can access and pop the item off of the back. So. Um, But the problem with using a queue is um, at um, various places, you need to be able to display all the items that are currently on your ready queue. So, um, so I could I could push my processes onto my queue. So I would say that process one was first on the ready queue, and then process two. Um, After that, so we expect that the Q size should be two um, at this point since we push two items onto it. So um, oh, I'm not using this anymore. Let's get rid of that. Um, we can certainly push items onto it, um, and you know, our queue will be size two, but you can't really iterate over that. So if I wanted to get all the items, um, um, you'll find that it won't allow you to do something like this to, to like iterate over the items. Um, all right, so, um, so yeah, those are called range based for. So uh, even in the uh, in Visual Studio um, is detecting um, that we're gonna get a compilation error there. Um, because, um, you know, again, queues aren't set up to be able to be containers that can be iterated over because you normally don't want to iterate, see what's in kind of the middle of the queue. You're only interested on the thing at the front of the queue currently, right? So, uh, um, so yeah, that's a compilation error of, um, of a complex message here. But um, so, so, yeah, I mean, but there's no kind of um, function call for a uh, uh, for iterating over that basically. So, so um, you know, what I recommend, I mean, you can use list just like Q. So list um, has uh, push back and push front. So you can actually use list as like a double ended Q, push things on either in front or back. So, so yeah, you, you would just want to use push back to push it onto the back. Um, 
and then probably and then I think it's push back and then pop front to, to, to get the things off the front and back. So um, if we go back and look at the list here. Um, we basically have um, the things like the push front, pop front, and we also have uh, push back and pop back. So, so yeah, if you always just push to the back and then um, and look at the front and pop from the front, um, you can um, basically treat a list as a queue. Um, I mean, it's 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 an efficient queue, so so it's a good container to use as a queue. So, um, so. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to change the name. So we want to use a list instead of a queue. Although I'll keep calling it ready queue. So we're actually using it as a queue. Right. Um, so oh, I probably have to include um, you know, the list uh, container type here. So I'll see if that builds. I think that I think that um, IntelliSense is just a little bit out of date there. Yeah. So I think that should build. And the advantage is it allows us to iterate and and you know so I've I've seen people use queue successfully instead of like a list, uh, but that forces you in order to iterate over all the items, you have to create a loop that that pops you know gets the item off the front displays it and then pushes it back. Um, then that's not only inefficient, but it's dangerous. Um, again, depending on how well you're managing your memory, right? It's not so dangerous if you just have a, a list of integers or a list of unsigned integers like these PIDs here. But um, but uh, but yeah, so, so that's your basic. Uh, so, so yeah, you'll need one of those. You might, again, like I said, you might may or may not need one for also to keep track of the items that are currently in the block state. So you might find it easier to have another list uh, as a block state. Uh, a map works very good for uh, your block state because instead of mapping onto the index, um, you could have a map that maps onto the event ID. Um, and, and then from the event ID, figure out which process is waiting on that event ID, right? So, so maps could be a good solution for that. I think that's what I use in my example solution. So. Um, okay, so I mean, that should be a lot of hints, I hope, um, if, if, if people are watching these videos um, of how you might actually go about creating your ready queue and your blocked list um, and your process control block. So that, that gives you a couple of possible approaches that you can try, so. Um, all right, so as usual, if you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and um, I will see you guys on the next help session.